Welcome back to my absolutely freezing cold workshop. Now, today I've got a little project. Uh, I've been challenged to see if I can do something for one of my friends. Uh, now, he's given me this, okay? Now, what's that? Now, that is the top plate off of a one-arm bandit. I think it's a 1960s, literally a one-arm bandit. Uh, I'll put a little picture here. It's one of these. Uh, now, this obviously says Riviera. Uh, but what he wants is he wants something that says this. Okay, so he's done this little bit of a design. So I've got the design and he's supplied me with a piece of acrylic. Okay, so what I've got to do is somehow get this design onto this acrylic so it looks like this. Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'll use my uh, laser to cut out a template. Uh, and see if I can actually paint it on. But the first thing we've got to do is take this design uh, and scan it and try and get it into Lightburn software. So let's get to the scanner. So now I've got the scanned image. Uh, I managed to put it on my laptop. Now this is my temporary setup for my laser until I do the workshop. Uh, I've got the image scanned, it's on my laptop. Uh, my laser is all powered up. So what I need to do now is start up Lightburn software and import that image into Lightburn software. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. Uh, I've now imported this image into Lightburn software. Uh, I haven't got any screen capture software, so hopefully you can see what's going on. Now what I need to do is now trace that image, right click on it, trace image, and what we want to try and do is convert this image into a vector. So it's something that the uh, software can understand. Now there's various controls down the bottom here that you can adjust, but it looks like this has actually done a good job of selecting the outline. Okay, so what I shall do is I'll say, okay. Then what I can do is delete the original image, which is that one there. And now, now gives me an image that the software can understand. Right, so now we've got our traced image uh, of his design. Now there's one thing I've noticed here Okay, we've got a little bit of a problem. Let me zoom in so you can try and see it. Okay, here we've got a little bit of a horn going on here. We don't like this because that will cut and it will look a bit silly. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit this image by selecting it up here, clicking on the bit we want to edit, go to here to node edit, Okay, and it brings up all our node points. Then if I zoom right in, I should be able to edit those points to give me a bit of a better shape. All right, so I'm gonna play with this for a little bit, make this all nice and tidy, and then we can start maybe doing some burning. Uh, right, it's quite a bit more editing I've got to do here. Uh, if you look at this line here, a lot of these lines are the same. Uh, it's a bit wibbly wobbly. Now that's where obviously it's been scanned from a piece of paper, through the scanner, onto a memory stick, onto this computer, then it's been traced uh, onto this. So you end up with these wibbly wobbly lines. Uh, so what I'm gonna have to do is just hopefully if I can repair that, what I do is I select it, then I go to edit, then I go to optimize selected shapes. Okay, that brings up this control box. I clicked my smooth source shaped, and then by adjusting this slider, you adjust how smooth it is. Uh, don't want to go too far out there. Say so, okay. So now if you look at it, the lines are a lot smoother. Okay, I could possibly go a little bit longer. Uh, but I've got to do that to a lot of these shapes. 
So I'll get on with that and then uh, I'll get back to you in a minute. Right, so I've now cleaned up all the edges on this uh, on this text here uh, and I've regrouped it so it's all one piece. Now the next step, what I want to do is to make sure that this frame size is the right size for my piece of Perspex. So rather than uh, burning it all completely, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a quick burn onto uh, a piece of paper here uh, and then see how it goes. So I'm going to set it on quite a low laser power uh, and fairly fast, just to give me an idea of how big it is. Then I could try that against my piece of acrylic. Uh, so first thing before I do that, uh, I've got to just adjust the focus of the laser using my little spacer, lower it onto the spacer, nip it up. Okay, that should be focused. Now I've got my speed set to a thousand and my power set to 30%. So let's just quickly run this and see what it looks like. Right, just brought this over to the bench so we can see uh, a very faint line here. Um, as I say, it was only on 30% and it's quite quick. But it's just to give us an indication of the size. Uh, here's our piece of Perspex, which is getting dusty because it's a workshop. Now, is the frame the right size? Look at that. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so that's the right size. But what I have to do now is edit the text a bit more because on the original one, uh, we've got this black line around the outside. So I've got to somehow do that on this text. Um, okay, I think there's an offset function I can use in Lightburn. Let's have a look at that. Right, <clears throat> so on this one here, obviously the outline is probably a little bit bigger. It's probably about three or four mil, uh, but I think I can only afford to do about two mil offset. Uh, so what I do is I select my little arrow here, select my drawing, Okay, so you can see the, the walking ants on this drawing here. Uh, then over here, there's a big O. Okay, that's for offset. Select that and it will ask you whether you want to do it on the outside, inside uh, and how big. So I'll set that for two mil. Okay, let's just move that out of the way sinks here. And as you can see, it's giving me an outline here all the way around the outside, which is good. That's about right. So I'll OK that. Uh, then I've got to do this one here. Now the problem is if I do an outline here, it might touch this one. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll do the same size offset, but I'll do it on the inside. OK, so now you can see that's on the inside. OK, and I'll carry on repeating this. That's all at two mil. Uh, again, for this one, Set. I'll do that inwards as well. See if I make it bigger, so we're on two mil here. If I do three, four, the offset gets bigger and bigger. Okay, but I think two will probably be okay. And then what I have to do is do that for all of my little components here. And then onto the other letters as well. Okay. So when we finish this one, obviously the inside here will be gold. This line here will be black and then the background is going to be red. That's the plan. Uh, let me do that for the rest of the letters. Right, so I've now done the outlines on the rest of the letters. Uh, I've put another piece of paper in my laser engraver there. Uh, what I'm gonna do is quickly run that slightly more powerful so I can uh, actually see the outline. Uh, let's, let me push the go button. Okay, and while that's uh, cooking away, uh, it's so cold in the workshop, I've had to put a little mat on the floor here because all the heat is just disappearing out of my body. Uh, right, let's let that do its cooking uh, and then we'll try it again. And then we have to mirror everything. I'll show you that in a second. Right, so this is the uh, next burning or next iteration of this. Uh, it looks great apart from, if you look, close on the edge here, 
uh, we've got a bit of a problem. Now obviously this is held in with a piece of chrome. Uh, if you look on the original one, the letters are at least five mil away from the edge. Now obviously on here, they're a bit closer. Uh, so what's gonna happen is the chrome is gonna cover over the bottom of the letters. Uh, oh, obviously had that up turned up a bit more. Let's cut through the paper. So what I need to do is ensure that there's at least five mil gap between the top of the letter and the edge. Mm. So it's whether I make it smaller or whether I try and do the outline on the inside. So let me resolve that little issue and then we'll come back and have another look. Right, so with this version, uh, we was quite close around the edges here, less than five mil. So what I've done is I've done another version here I made this text slightly smaller uh, and smaller this way so it's given me a bit more space around the edge uh, and I've also moved this B this way a little bit okay so now it should give us enough space for the chrome edging to fit around the edge right okay happy with the size happy with the design happy with the outline now what we have to do is obviously I need to use that as a template so I need to stick it to the back of this to paint it. So it needs to be backwards. Right, let's mirror it. All right, so the first thing we need to do is all of these at the moment are separate little uh, vectors or separate little components. So we need to group the whole thing together. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, select my little arrow up the top here, select that, select everything in a big box, Okay, then right click and group. So now that is one drawing. Uh, and then the whole thing I need to flip that way. So I need to mirror it horizontally. Now up here, you've got some mirror buttons. So what I'm gonna do is push that one, which says mirror selection horizontally, push that, and it's flipped it this way. Okay, so that should give us what we need. So uh, what I'm going to do is yet again, I'm going to burn that onto a piece of paper. I'm going to turn the power up a little bit more so I can actually pull out the, uh, the burnt bits. Okay, so let's burn some more. Right, so I'm now burning this again. Uh, it's uh, now at 45%, so it hopefully we'll cut through the paper. Uh, this time I've used a little bit of masking tape to hold the paper flat. Uh, the reason is because last time I cut it, um, the paper actually curled up a little bit and the focus went out very slightly so it won't cut through it. Okay, so let's let that do its thing and then we can try it against the Perspex. Right, so just run this at 45%. Uh, it's not quite enough still. Uh, now the idea is obviously this then gets stuck to the back of the Perspex. Then <coughs> I turn it over and it should be the right way around. Now the idea is if they're stuck to the back, then I can unpick all of these bits. So like for this bit, for example, uh, I can pull those out if that's all stuck to it, then I can paint the areas that are exposed. Okay, so first do the black, then pick out where the gold's gonna go, paint the gold, and then take off the rest of it and paint it all red. That's the idea, uh, but this obviously didn't go through far enough. This is obviously on paper, so it's just a, a trial. Uh, now I've got to get it right on the paper, then, which is what I'm doing here, it's running again on paper, uh, then what I have to do is try it on my final medium, which is this, which is vinyl. I don't know if that's gonna work, uh, but we'll see. I don't know. Right, finally, I've done a version that's cut all the way through by the looks of it. Yeah, so all my bits are free to come out. Uh, so what I need to do now is try and get that just on the bench. Let's try and move it. Yeah, that's good. Right, move the bench. Okay, so the idea is, let's pull it out here. 
This is not how it's going to be done, but this is just to see what it's going to look like. Okay, that'll be stuck to my bit of Perspex. And then as I turn it over, I'll be able to spray from the other side the bits that I uncover. Right, I'm happy with that. So what I need to do now is cover this with my vinyl. Right, so I now have my uh, my piece of acrylic. Uh, it's got the vinyl on the back. Uh, I've got as many bubbles out as I can, but there's still some in it. Uh, and I laid up my laser to do one final cut on a piece of clear cardboard, on a piece of cardboard, uh, just so I could make sure I position it correctly. Uh, then my laser decided to do this. Uh, basically, it started losing steps, and it was burning in the same place over and over again. Uh, so now I've had to completely reset everything. I'm just doing one more run to make sure I can get it in the right place. Uh, hopefully it doesn't muck up on this, otherwise it's all gonna be game over, basically. All right, let's let this finish doing its thing. Right, hopefully you can hear me because my microphone's gone flat. Uh, right, I've done one more cut here and it's cut it all out quite successfully. Uh, yeah, okay, so that should give me my position where it's got to go. Uh, but I got a sneaking suspicion that when this goes back to zero, uh, it's missing steps. Uh, so I'm going to have to do it once more just to make sure I'm happy for this to go in here. Uh, how many times? Right, I've just done one cut directly after another and the end here, look, is this much out. This may not seem like a lot, but when you've only got a few mil to play with, uh, there seems to be a lot. Oh, but I'm going to have to try it anyway and see what happens. So this should sit in here. It's all focused. Uh, let's, let's see what happens. just finished hopefully it's cut all the way through the uh, vinyl um, I should be able to look from underneath with a torch I'm going to take this off have a quick look at it uh, and put the extractor back on because it's a bit smelly in here all right so it looks like it's cut through the vinyl okay uh, and if we look with a torch if I just turn a torch on you can actually see it's cut all the way through so it shouldn't be any problem pulling the vinyl off so I can paint it 
The only issue I've got is obviously where it was laying on the uh, the waste board, uh, there seems to be a little bit of burning on the outside of the acrylic. So what I'm going to have to do is try and take these out and give it a bit of paint and I'll have to assess what they looks like afterwards. Let's get some painting done. All right, hopefully you can see from that camera angle. Uh, now obviously looking at this one, uh, it appears that the uh, the black is closest to us. So obviously the black outline is the first one I need to take off. So what I'm going to use is a scalpel and then hopefully I'm going to be able to pick out the first layer, so that's the outline, without doing any other damage. So basically pull this off like this. Now I must make sure that I take off the right bits because if I take off the wrong bits, it's all going to go horribly wrong. Okay, so that's the first bit done. So what the idea is now, I take off the rest of the letters, then I paint that black. Then that should give me a black outline. That's the idea. So what you see there is white will become black. Right, so what I've done here is I've just set up a quick spray booth. In other words, a, an old sheet up against my cupboards. Uh, I've masked up this because I don't want any paint on the other side. Uh, so I just masked around the edge to make sure that no paint gets round it. Uh, I've obviously taken the first bit of black off. So all I'm going to do is quickly go over it with a couple of coats of black rattle can. Uh, and hopefully that'll be okay. So let's give this a go. Right, so I've left the uh, black outline to dry for a bit. Uh, now what do I have to do now? I have to, all the bits that are going to be gold, so on this one, for example, all the bits in the middle, okay, I now have to, it's called weeding. You have to weed out the, uh, the vinyl. Okay, the same as we did with the outline, but this time I have to decide which ones are gonna be gold. So I know all of the R here is going to be gold. So what I have to do is weed out that section in the middle. In other words, pick it off without scratching anything and without pulling out, pulling up the original paint. Done. Okay, so I've now pulled out this bit of the R. So that is gonna be gold. So same again, I've decided which bits are going to be gold, remove the vinyl, and then when I spray it, those bits will be gold. Right, so I've weeded that. Uh, now all I've got to do is give that a coat of uh, gold. I'm just using a rattle can again. Uh, I'll probably give this two or three coats this time. Uh, right, let's do some more spray. Right, so now the, uh, the gold is dry, so I've done the black outline, the gold inside. Uh, now all I have to do is take all the masking tape off, then the final bit of vinyl, and then hit it with some red. 
that I've got to basically cover the whole lot in red. So let's get this off. But I've still got to mask up the edges because I don't want red paint on the edges. Right, so this is now completely masked up. Uh, now I've got to just hit the whole lot with the red. Right, so this has been drying overnight now. Uh, it's still masked up on the other side, so I don't know what it's going to look like yet. Hopefully, it's going to look something like this. Uh, right, let's get the masking tape off and have a look. Right, got a bit of a problem. Right, so uh, it looks okay. Uh, apart from, if you look up really close, let's try and get this in focus. Uh, right, I don't know if you can see around the letters, where the laser's gone through, it's actually burnt the outside. I think it's gone through the material and then where it's hit the, uh, the base, it's actually burnt back. Difficult to get a photo. Let's see if I can get a close-up photograph. Right, so it looks okay, but up close is a burn mark. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to polish that out. Uh, if not, I'm going to have to do the whole thing again. Um, let me try and polish it out and see what I can do. Right, well I've managed to give it a bit of a polish uh, using my buffing wheel and a little bit of polishing compound uh, and I think I've got most of it out. It's very difficult to see it here but I think I've got most of it out. Uh, one other issue I've got now which I'm going to try and demonstrate uh, which means I've got to give it some more paint. All right, so we're looking up at the light here uh, and when this obviously goes in the fruit machine it's going to be a back light. Uh, at the moment, if it shines through like this, it looks a bit scratchy. Uh, so I think what I've got to do is give it another couple of coats of red paint. So I've got to mask this up again uh, and then give it another couple of coats. All right, I'll get on with that. Right, well I think that is just about it. I can't do any more now. I've given that some more uh, paint, so now the light doesn't shine through it anymore. Um, we've obviously started off with his original design, uh, with the original piece of backing here. Uh, we've gone through loads of iterations of different bits of paper and stencils. We've covered it in vinyl. Uh, we sprayed it with cans of spray and what we've ended up with is this okay so we started with this and we've ended up with this now I think there's quite a good uh, reproduction and it's obviously customized now that says Bradfield uh, he can obviously keep this one if he sells the machine uh, then he can obviously replace it okay so original my copy yeah I think that'll do. Right, that's about it for now. You're probably never going to do this, but some ideas about using stencils and lasers, etc., etc. 
All right, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.